Hi everyone, welcome back for another video. Um, today's video is my December solar update. A uh, little later than I'd hoped, I was hoping to include the price per kilowatt hour for my first month with Octopus Energy, Octopus Agile, and uh, I haven't had a bill yet. So um, rather than keep waiting for it, we'll get on and we'll present what happened in December otherwise. Basically for the month, it's been a dire month. Um, one of the lowest, if not the lowest solar production uh, month that I've had so far. So very poor solar wise. But I think the big thing that I can take from the month is my, my getting used to um, winter use of solar panels and a battery as well. And then utilizing the battery with a lower tariff overnight. So that's on the Octopus Agile tariff. So my getting used to that has, has been a big contrast to when I look back at last year, last December. So pretty much that's the big thing that I want to take from this video and I'll cover after we present the numbers. What I basically did was I went back and watched my own video in uh, November last year, my November update. And I was very against batteries then. Um, I didn't think a battery justified in that I knew I wasn't exporting any energy during the winter. And if I wasn't exporting any, any energy, then I didn't have any free. So I didn't have any free to put into a battery to utilize later. So all of my benefit of a battery in winter would be charging up from cheaper energy at another time and then discharging it later when it's more expensive. So my gain would be the size of the battery multiplied by the difference in energy price that I could achieve between charging at night and charging during the day. And that's what I've been experiencing. So I've sort of been proving myself right from last November, but I feel different about batteries now. And that's what I want to cover perhaps at the end of the video. But right now I want to cover the numbers. And I've been sat here scratching my head, trying to work out the numbers and I've, I wouldn't say I've got a problem or an issue here, but something just doesn't add up. And I don't like it when it doesn't add up. Um, what I used to find when I had the last battery installed, and that was the pure drive battery, um, that my numbers actually added up. But partly the battery was installed in the wrong position on the house AC system. I'd installed it, or my installer had installed it, um, in a position where the energy came directly from the solar panels, went straight into the battery, and then nothing else saw it because it didn't get to the consumer unit. It didn't get to the My Energy devices for them to see that solar information and to see that battery being charged. So some of the data was just missing, but the, but the numbers added up. And that's sort of a bit of a mystery as to why that is, because now the battery is installed in the correct position between the meter cupboard and the consumer unit. So any battery charging I do from solar, I can see in the My Energy device sees that. It definitely sees the charging of the battery and puts it into the home values. But I can't see that the My Energy app um, actually records the information of where energy comes from the battery. Because again, that must be either coming out of the battery, going into either the Eddy, the Zappi, the house. I mean, it won't be going back into the battery, but you can see that on one side, you've got solar, you've got import from the grid, and you've got import from the battery. They're your inputs all on the inside. And then on the outside, you've got the Zappi, the Eddy, the battery, and the house. Now, when I list the numbers for them all side by side, they don't add up. But magically, the my energy numbers themselves do add up and they add up without using a battery number. Now, if I know that battery charging is in the house number, it's in the my energy numbers. And I suspect that the battery out data, so the energy coming out of the battery into something else is not included then perhaps that solves my problem because I'm trying to include battery in and battery out in my numbers and they just don't add up. So is the my energy data screwing me up? What do you find? Have you got the same sort of system, the same sort of config? Um, how do you balance the in column and the out column of energy to try and balance it, to see where it all went? Anyway, so <laughs> I'll, I'll present the actual numbers later and uh, try to show that as well. But let's get on with what the numbers were for the month of December, because it was a poor month. I've seen some of the reviews of other people that I follow, like Spectrum Geeks and John Tisbury, and they seem to have done slightly better than me. So I guess they've had a little bit better weather than I have. 
So here we go. Here's the numbers for December. It sounds like I'm doing the Eurovision Song Contest, doesn't it? And the numbers for Great Britain, Norfolk are. Anyway, without further ado, here we go. So starting with the Solis inverter, that's 3.9 kilowatts of solar panels, a 3.6 kilowatt inverter. We managed only 110.5 kilowatt hours for the month of December. Lowest generation day was only 0.6 of a kilowatt hour, and the highest generation of the month was 9.3 kilowatt hours. Although this December was the worst month of solar generation over the entire 2020, we did a little bit better than 2019. The side-by-side -side comparison of 2020 to 2019, that's a little bit more difficult to see because the scale is different. 2020 we generated a lot more in the summer, so the scale is slightly different. And although this December was worse than last year, last year we had 125 kilowatt hours, last November wasn't as good as this November, so it swings and roundabouts, isn't it? So onto the solar edge inverter, that's a 2 kilowatt inverter with 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels. We only managed 62.88 kilowatt hours for the month. And again, looking side by side, last year, December, we generated 74.87 kilowatt hours versus this month, 62.88. So yep, slightly down. What's that, roughly 10%? I don't have a whole year's worth of comparison on the Solar Edge app, but uh, it shows a better side-by-side -side comparison in this view. So you can see in November, we actually did better this year than last year on the Solar Edge. And of course, in December, we didn't do so well this year. So for the year, the Solar Edge app generated 2.59 megawatt hours, and yet we exported over the entire year 2.65 megawatt hours. Hmm, how many panels have I bought? It really screws with my head sometimes about how much we export versus how much we're generating with those extra panels. But how much did we import from the grid over the year? 610 kilowatt hours, 0.61 of a megawatt hour. That's not a lot, is it? For an entire year, 610 kilowatt hours. That's just 1.67 kilowatt hours on average per day over the entire year. Putting the data together in my own spreadsheet, it looks like this. It's 173.38 kilowatt hours for the month combined with the two arrays. Okay, moving on to the My Energy app. Uh, it says we used 33.3 kilowatt hours on the Eddy, 33.6 kilowatt hours on the Zappi, and 264 kilowatt hours in the house. The Eddy, that's the solar diverter heating our hot water on the immersion heater, says that this month we used 18 kilowatt hours from solar, so the other, what's that, 15, that would have come from the grid. But that's not 15 bad kilowatt hours from the grid, that's good, because under the Octopus Agile tariff, that charging of the hot water would have been for free. And the Zappi device, that's our car charger. Well, instead of 33 kilowatt hours, it actually says on the device 30.87. And 63% of that came from the grid, and only 37% came from solar panels. So that's not how it normally looks percentage-wise. It normally looks the other way around for me. But again, we've been charging from Octopus Agile for free, so grid use isn't bad anymore. As a side note, while looking at Zappi data, car charging data, this is the screen view of the entire total that I've been charging on the Zappi. Up until the 24th of August, which was the last charging session for my Kona Electric. As I very rarely charged out on public chargers, apart from when Instavolt chargers were free and Podpoint chargers were free of course, this gives a really good indication of what the cost and the ownership is like of an electric car. So if you look at those numbers, the 3086 kilowatt hours went into the Kona Electric, 2,149 were from solar energy, they were green, 936 came from the grid. Now, I had a period of time from September to January where I didn't have solar panels, so that's why there's grid energy there, mostly. So what I like to look at with this is 3,086 kilowatt hours. Well, I was able to drive 19,380 miles, and the car went back with a full state of charge. 
that works out to be 6.279 miles per kilowatt hour. Yep, that's a really, really high number. Yes, the Kona Electric was efficient, but of course there's some free pod point charging, free InstaVolt charging, and a couple of charges that I did pay for, and some 7 kilowatt chargers. So there's a bit extra in there, but it gives you a good example of what ownership is like. Because owning an electric car, there is the joy of charging for free as well. You do get some free charging. And how much did I pay for that then? So the 936 kilowatt hours from the grid, if you say that I averaged 15 pence a kilowatt hour, which I think is a reasonable average over the term, that's 140 pounds. But in actual fact, I didn't pay for it at all. Now, I'm not going to discuss that in this video. Uh, I'll cover it in another video. But I actually got all those miles for free. So if we go back to the Solar Edge app, the bits I haven't discussed are export and import. So for the month of December, we imported 164 kilowatt hours and we exported 26.95 kilowatt hours. But have a look at this. Look how it compares to last December. Last December, we exported 15 kilowatt hours, which is less than this December. Now, I know it's only 10 kilowatt hours difference, but... This December, we generated less solar energy. So if we generated less solar energy, we should be exporting less. So why did we export more this month? Well, we've got a home storage battery, haven't we? And it constantly balances the grid, so it's sending some out. So actually, I've lost 10 kilowatt hours by having a home storage battery. And remembering this month that we imported 164 kilowatt hours from the grid, Last December, we imported 256 kilowatt hours. So let's have a look at the difference. It's mostly car charging. Last December, without lockdowns, etc., we charged 182 kilowatt hours, 137 of those from the grid. This December, we only added 30 kilowatt hours to the car, to the Mini, but we only charged 19 kilowatt hours from the grid, a difference of 118 kilowatt hours. This 118 kilowatt hours, less grid usage, less car charging. This becomes very relevant when we look at how much I paid for my electricity between the two months. So this December, I've now moved on to the Octopus Agile tariff, and I paid, well, I'm guessing from this app, it looks like £14.52 for my electricity. So annoyingly, Bulb Energy, who I was with last month, didn't do calendar month billing. So that doesn't agree exactly to the numbers we've just seen. So let's do the calculation manually. Grid use was 256 kilowatt hours for the month of December last year. Deduct off 118 kilowatt hours, the extra that we've been charging the electric car last year, but not this year, to equalise the two, and that comes to 138 kilowatt hours. 138 kilowatt hours at the price that Bulb was charging me at the time comes to £18.75. Add together with 31 days of standing charge, that's another £6.33, so a total of £25.08, compared to the £14.52 on Octopus Agile this month, that's just a little over £10 difference. Are you still with me then? £10 difference between last December and this December in electricity prices, normalised for what I did differently with charging. The only difference between the two years? I've got a home storage battery now. I didn't have last year. So I've saved £10 in a month having a storage battery. Does that really make it worthwhile having? As I was saying in last November's video, I don't think I can justify having a storage battery because I don't export enough during winter. And the difference of what I can buy energy for and what I can use the energy and make savings of just doesn't justify. The example I've got here, it saved me £10. Even if it was £15, and there are three major months in the winter of November, December, January, we're talking £45 saving. And that's without considering that I could have moved to Octopus Go or Octopus Agile and made some savings without having a battery. So financially, it's really not looking like I can justify having a battery. So I agree with what I said last November. But... I absolutely love having the battery. I've really enjoyed it. It feels right. And I still want a home storage battery. I do. Even though the savings are this small, I still want one. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope there was some useful information there. Um, yeah, the batteries are a bit of a challenge in working out whether they're good for you, whether they're not, whether they justify, whether they're worth the money. But my, my gut feeling on them is, unless you are a really high user and you can't utilize your solar energy during the day and hence you need a battery, then they really are an extravagance, something for the person that just wants the ultimate system. Because let's come down to you know the nuts and bolts. If someone offered you a free battery and said build your ultimate system and we'll do it for free would you include a battery or wouldn't you and of course you would of course you want one because it makes it better it is a more flexible system it does work better and for the future you've got the ability thinking about exporting energy and you can use a battery to store up cheap energy and then sell it to the grid cheaply so a battery does make sense and it's something you'd want in your configuration and that's why i love it i love the idea of having a battery but but there's still this issue that they just don't seem to make financial sense at all. And therefore, you're scratching your head going, should I? Shouldn't I? My heart says I want one. Uh, the pocket says, well, I don't know if I should. I should be spending that money on something else. Would I get more benefit from buying more solar panels or, or something else? Anyway, you can see my quandary. Um, it's nice that I've got a battery and I've tried the battery and I haven't had to buy it yet. We'll no doubt see long term as to what I actually buy because I'm lucky enough at the moment that I haven't had to buy this battery. I'm actually testing it. So I've got the privilege of knowing what it's like without a battery, what it's like with a battery. And now I can decide what I want and when to get it as well. That's uh, months ahead, whether that's sometime this year, not quite sure yet. As always, thanks for watching everyone. Thank you for sharing these videos. Um, if you don't share them, please think about it. Please think about sharing it to whatever social media you use because the more you share, the more people see it and the more people see it and click, then the more YouTube will push it out and it really helps the channel. So as well as liking, subscribing, please share the video if you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot and see you again soon. Bye for now. And something uh, just for the end of the video, perhaps I'll include like I used to with the hints about the car. Um, the video that I was hoping to do, and I couldn't work out whether to do it before this one or after, was basically I haven't paid any electricity bills for a couple of years, and it doesn't look like I'm going to for another year or maybe more. So I want to explain in my next video how I've achieved not having to pay for electricity including having an electric car and driving, you know, the 19,000 miles in the Kona Electric. And I've basically done all of that for free. How is that possible? So I want to cover that in the next video. Anyway, take care. See you again soon. Bye for now.